the first game seven tomorrow, which is Knicks Pacers. Like you said, it's going to be game seven in the garden. Two iconic franchises who have historically bad blood <laughs> between the two of them. Is Reggie Miller calling this game? No, it's a, I just looked. It's an ESPN uh, game. If it was a <laughs> TNT game, boy, they would oh be firing God. him up in the garden. For real. Um, but yeah, coming off of game six, which I had to go watch at a bar because I didn't have no Wi-Fi at my crib for three days. So appreciate you, AT&T, for coming up clutch there. <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, the the Pacers came out and they uh they kind of took a page out of the Knicks playbook. They felt like they were playing with more intensity and pace and physicality, which was surprising to see. Siakam, I think, had a really good start to this game. Um, they got out to a pretty sizable lead. Brunson struggled heavily. I know he finished with 31, but he finished with 31 on 26 shots. It didn't look like it. <laughs> yeah, it look like that, that ain't good. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, we're going to a Game 7. In this series, the Pacers won both the total rebounding battle and the offensive rebounding battle, um, which is definitely rare for them in this series. So they got after it. Obviously, probably the biggest storyline going into Game 7 is Josh Hart's health. Um, he, I think they said, is officially pulled like an ab muscle um, in that game. He was still trying to play through it, which is crazy. But obviously, it reached a point where he just it just got too much for him and he had to get subbed out. Um, so his status for game seven is questionable on the flip side. OG status is questionable, which is up because he's been uh, basically certified to be out every other game in this series. So he potentially could come back tomorrow. So, you know, you lose Josh Hart, you maybe can get back. OG we'll see without either of them at this point. Like I'm, I'm, you gotta be scared for the Knicks. I understand Brunson has super man moments. Mm -hmm. They're going to be in the garden and, you know, DiVincenzo and Deuce McBride, like they've been, they've been hooping, but man, that bench is getting thinner and thinner by the day. For real. What, I'm just like, we're starting to see Jericho Sims minutes, bro. We're, it's they're bad. just, they're running out of bodies it's in New getting York. getting bad. They about to start pulling people off the street, bro. Like, yo, can you <laughs> give me, can you give me 30 tonight? Can you give hey, me 30 minutes? Bro, in, in New York, you might mess around, find somebody who can be somewhat serviceable. They, they're going to get some, they're going to get some crackhead off the street that's just got a bunch of energy. It was like, bro, I just need you to fill the Josh Hart role, bro. Hustle, <laughs> rebound. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to ask you first, uh, who are you picking? Going into this series, knowing what the Knicks injuries, uh, Knicks are going into game seven, excuse me, knowing the Knicks injury situation right now. <sighs> Coming off a loss, potentially no Josh Hart, man, potentially still no OG Adenobi, bodies running thin. Give me the Knicks still, man. Give I was about Knicks to say the same. Give me the Knicks, man. Give me the Knicks, man. Give me still a Knicks tape, bro. Still a Knicks tape. Give me the Knicks, man. I still think they'll pull through out there. And they, listen, they're in the Garden. I think that the Pacers play way better at home. I think they play with more physicality at home. They hustle more at home. They play better defense when they're at home. Like I said, they really made it a point to like, look, we're gonna make sure that they're not they're not gonna kill us on the glass. And like they look like they actually made it a point to you know offensive rebound, just rebound in general get out, run, do what they do. But uh, it being in the garden, obviously, is a plus for the for the Knicks. Um, I don't think Jalen Brunson – I mean, he ended up with not a stinker, quote-unquote, but, like, he didn't play good. Stinker, like, stinker bad. Fair enough. Okay, fair <laughs> fair enough. Like, I'm just saying, like, st he ended with 31 points, but, you know, looking at it or watching the game, like, it was – he didn't play good. So yeah. I don't think he has two of those games back-to-back, -back, which is a plus for the Knicks. Um even though they got a lot of injuries, I mean, they, they've been stepping it up. Like, you know what I mean? Deuceman Bride has been giving them excellent minutes. Like, he, this guy, bro, he was playing he great. He looks like – I really can't believe that he – I feel like he stepped into the Quentin Grimes role in those minutes and is, like, so far exceeded. And I thought Quentin Grimes was great on the Knicks. He's, like, so far exceeded that role already. For His real. contract is looking like one of the best in the NBA at this point. Exactly. So he's stepping up, giving them great minutes. Um, 
Dante DiVincenzo, obviously, you know, he struggled. I believe it wasn't the last game. He actually played a little, like, stepped it up a little bit. The game before that, I think he was playing bad, shooting pretty bad. But hopefully you get a good performance out of him. But honestly, man, I just think at home, that Garden crowd is going to be insane for a game seven. I think if Jalen Brunson, which I think he will, has like a typical Jalen Brunson efficient 40 ball type of game where I think he definitely will have that type of game. I still I still ride with the Knicks. I still think that they'll be able to pull it out at home. Um, if it's no Josh Hart, no OG, it would be tough. I'm not going to lie. It would be tough. But getting at least one of those guys back makes me more, obviously it makes me more confident. If they get both. I'm very confident, you know what I mean? But we'll see what happens as far as injury department. But regardless, I think I'm riding with the Knicks. I agree. I'm taking the Knicks. Hell or high water. If it's five bodies on the floor. They man, playing all 48. They, they going to play their hearts out. Uh, <laughs> and I just think the, the, the moment I think is really going to set in. I think the city is going to be just on one. They are going to be on one. And they're going to realize, like, yo, we can get to the conference finals for the first time in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I think, like you mentioned, Jalen Brunson is going to rise to the occasion. I would expect him to have the super hero, Superman, superhero type of performance that we've seen from him, you know, all playoffs. And, and one, of the, one of the others is going to step up, whether that's Deuce, whether that's Dante, if Josh or OG can play. We know what we're getting from them if they can play. Um, I think Precious Achua, Achua has also played, you know, very, very well in the minutes that he's gotten in this series. Back that's up. true. Um, Harnstein, who, Achua wasn't even a guy who was expected to get a ton of burn. Um, obviously, now with Mitchell Robinson out, like he's just next man up mentality. But mm -hmm. they just – I just don't think the Pacers are going to be ready for what's about to – like what that environment is going to be like in it's the It's going to be crazy. Um, Siakam has been so up and down this series. Um, and, and honestly, I would say it's been more down, especially coming out of like the Buck series. He looked really good um, against Milwaukee, but he struggled a bunch against um, New York. I, I just think a lot has to go very, very right for Indiana to win this game seven. And if it's murky, scrappy, close at all, man, give me the Knicks. Give me the Knicks. They just it's the the energy being at home and just the identity of that team being as scrappy as they are, getting this close to getting over that hurdle to get back into a conference finals. I, I think they're going to be able to pull it off. I think Brunson will lead them there. So I am going to be taking the Knicks as well. Um, I, think, I will say I will say for the Pacers, if y'all are going to win, Tyrese Halliburton has to be elite. It needs to be a duel. It Whatever, even if they lose, this needs to be a game where Tyrese goes in and understands, like, if I if we want to have a chance to make – and th th on the flip side, like, this Indian – and going into the season, even going into this playoff, I don't think anybody had any business picking the Indiana Pacers to be a team that could potentially make the Eastern Conference Finals. That's true. Off the bat, you immediately are like, they're getting bounced out by Philly or Milwaukee or Boston or New York. They're behind one of those four. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they are even in a position to potentially be in the Eastern Conference Finals, like Halber needs to go into this game and seize that moment and understand, like, look, I know he's the guy that wants to push the pace and do the, you know, the, the modern day Steve Nash seven or seconds or less and get the ball up and moving, like, not – Tomorrow night, or I guess tomorrow afternoon, you need to come up and you need to get aggressive, bro. Because mm -hmm. a lot of times you can get your shot off as funky janky as that <laughs> release is, you can get that shot off at a very high clip. You need to start letting that fly more often, like you mm -hmm. did in game. What was it the, whatever the one that they're calling the Mother's Day massacre? Was that game five, right? Was it or game, game, four. game four, game four. It was game four. Yeah, where he was letting it go. Mm -hmm. That's the Tyrese Halliburton needs to show up in game seven if the Pacers want to have a chance to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. And um, let's just say in a hypothetical world that they do, I was actually listening to uh, the numbers on the board earlier, and they compared if they were able to make the Eastern Conference Finals to when the Hawks did it, how it would be that type of like, 
perfect storm of, you know, you played a couple teams that were injured and you got there um, and that it might give the uh, the front office fool's goal thinking that they're closer to being ready to contend than they actually are. So that's true. I that will is. say regardless of the outcome, I do need Pacers to be real with themselves and understand that at the end of the day, yes, you play whatever team is put in front of you. But if the team in the first round was put in front of you had Giannis, you would be at the crib. Facts. So and operate as such when it comes to this offseason and move. Please forward. do. Y'all, <laughs> y'all are not one move away. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, we're close. We made it because it's all you're always going to. They made it to the Eastern Conference Finals, though. But it's like, and look, I, I've been the victim of that, too. When I like, coming off of that Hawks series, I'm like, man, they was right there. I was, they too. Was right there. But like the, you, theirs felt le- a little less fluky. I mean. Who was really hurt when they when they made that run though? Like, I mean, Abid was like he still played. I'm I, every postseason. It, they 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 benefited more so not from an injury, but really like a full on mental collapse That's from true. the Philadelphia <laughs> 76ers. Like that we watched true. Ben Simmons get this close to the rim and pass the ball. Bro. <laughs> like they they got. I hate to say lucky, but it's hard to almost put it in a different term. But they they kind of got lucky in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, it, it would feel eerily similar to that because, like, again, on paper, going into next season, win or lose this game seven, like, I, I still wouldn't put Indiana in the top four out east, let alone no. anything out west. It's like y'all are further away regardless of what happens. So, like, look, at the end of the day, like I said, you play whatever's put in front of you. You're about to go in front of a Knicks team that is decimated by injuries right now, which might put y'all in the position to get to the Easter Conference Finals against the Celtics. Y'all definitely going to get belt to ass in that game, but it's, Facts. you know what I mean? Y'all going to get, get worked. Oh, my God. Um, But, look, just, just understand that it, it could have gone very differently for y'all. So, take it. I hope the fans are excited. But there's, there's more work to be done than just trying to make that all-in move trade three first-round picks for DeJounte Murray type of deal. Oh and now y'all have the number one overall pick. <laughs> Listen, man, Tyrese, just shoot the ball, bro. I don't need kickouts to Aaron E. Smith, bro. Shoot the ball. That's all I got to say. Yeah, he, he, he's got to get aggressive. Mm-hmm.